What do you think when you hear uh, people who, who who wish to be the prime minister of the country saying that this is a course of action that they feel comfortable with? Clearly, you don't feel comfortable with. And what does that say about the ability of your sectors to convey a message to government, regardless of who is in power, um, and for that to be heard and to be listened to? Is it that you think that government doesn't understand that, or it thinks that something else is more important than uh, economic vandalism, prohibited by tariffs, would be disastrous, simply not an option? How do, you, how do you feel when you see the state of public debate, given the clarity with which you've spoken before us this morning? I don't know who would like to... Well, I mean, if, if I speak for our members, Please. no deal is the thing upon which they are most unanimous. Right. So there'll be a range of opinions about all the different elements of this. But on no deal, the consistent message has been that is not an acceptable option for us. Uh, in our most recent survey, 45% said no deal would lead to redundancies. A further 30% said serious financial consequences. So I think all we can do is continue to try to highlight <coughs> what our members are telling us, the people on the front line, the people who are making food and drink, drink in this country. Um, we can't clearly impinge on the political debate, but we have to keep trying to make sure that we are accurately representing what our members are saying about the consequences so that others can make that judgment. I mean, <clears throat> I, I'd agree. The, there's clearly a lot of politics at play uh, yeah. uh, with the, um, the premise that you've, you've, you've put forward, Chairman. Um, you know, it's our job as a member organisation representing an industry <coughs> sector uh, to look at the implications of public policy decisions on our members' businesses. Uh, and it's very clear to us that a no-deal Brexit, and, and I want to be clear we're talking about a no-deal Brexit, um, uh, would be very damaging. Uh, and therefore, um, it's quite right and proper that we uh, make that known uh, as loudly and clearly as we can uh, to those who are making those policy decisions. And it is, uh, it is frankly worrying that we see, um, we see that being put forward as a, uh, as a plausible scenario to leave without a deal. Uh, in October um, by, by policy makers and our leaders. Mr Nash? Um, so obviously we set out what the cost of no deal would be, but I think our, our appeal to MPs would be to understand what the cost of just the threat of no deal is. Um, so the prospect of it, the fact that it's promoted as, as an option, is extremely costly to our, to our sector. So for, for our members who have undone, uh, undergone no deal contingency planning, this is costing tens of millions of pounds, thousands of working hours to, to plan for a no, deal, a no deal Brexit. And even with the best will in the world, no company can fully mitigate against all the risks of a no deal Brexit. Um, hearing politicians uh, promote the idea of no deal doesn't fill any of our, our member companies with any confidence uh, whatsoever, nor does it fill international investors with confidence either. So um, our, our strong desire is that no deal will be taken off the table and that it be ruled out, um, and that companies in automotive having to focus time and money and resource on planning for no deal could focus that time, money and resource on things that frankly are more important. Okay, Mr. Nevin, is there anything you want to add? Um, our members have made clear that there is a direct link between politicians talking up the prospect of a no deal and British firms losing customers overseas and British people losing jobs in British firms. We saw in the first quarter of this year stockpiling activities in preparation for a potential no deal Brexit at the end of March reach the highest level ever recorded in the G7. Uh, demand for warehouse space rocketed by uh, an unprecedented 32%. Uh, we now know from... Uh, Sorry, again, could you speak up? Because it's very hard at this end of the table to hear. We Apologies. now know from our Q2 figures uh, that export orders are at the lowest level they have been at in, in recent years. Domestic orders have also collapsed. So export orders are, are down by 8%, which is, again, unprecedented. Domestic orders <coughs> are down by 11%. Investment in UK firms has been paralysed for the last four quarters, six if you take out the cyclical period of Christmas last year. Productivity per worker ha has been negative for, the last th for three of the last four quarters. We know from direct reports from members that they have had customers overseas, not just in the EU, but as far away, away as Japan and Korea, because we trade with those, these countries via the benefits of EU free trade agreements, that those firms in those countries are now looking to move uh, their, their uh, business elsewhere and looking to source goods that they have traditionally bought from the UK from other countries because of politicians talking about a no-deal Brexit. So we want the no-deal Brexit taken off uh, as an option. It is, it is uh, as I said earlier, an act of economic vandalism. 
Right, well that's very clear.